What is good guys, Indigo Bruno here, welcome to my channel. I'm back now, I'm going to start making YouTube videos now, I'm just going to get straight to it. Thank you everyone that's showing love right now for my TikTok, if you're on here. But let's talk about the third eye. The third eye is really, or the pineal gland, you know, the, the physical gland for the third eye. The third eye is actually something very important in all aspects of self and all aspects of life. It literally, first you have to know that the human body is not just, you know, this thing that you see a pure meat vessel with bones. We're much more than that. We are energy beings, light beings, and our physical body itself is made up of many layers of self. The energy body, it's like, that's why they say the human is made up of mind, body, and spirit. Because we are, you know, the physical body, the mind, and obviously the energy body. Which I think, in a way, the soul is also related to our energy body. It's just, at least in Hindu culture, they say that our soul is right here within us. But it's only, it's kind of concealed inside this layer of karmic structure and that's why they say the cycle of reincarnation is broken when you begin to release that and kind of untangle the ropes of the karmic structure and your soul kind of just merges with everything in existence and you become we already are one with everything really beyond inside of you is your consciousness which i feel is everywhere like your consciousness you right here watching me i feel like we have that same presence within us even within the little bird out there i feel like it's the same presence you know but beyond that, you know, we are light beings. We are much more than just our physical bodies. And the pineal gland is something that proves that. But for thousands of years, the Egyptians have known about the third eye. You know, the eye of Horus right here. That's literally a depiction of the third eye. The eye of Horus and the eye of Ra. They literally show, if you split your brain in half, you can see the eye of Horus and the eye of Ra. And literally right there in the middle, the little eye is literally the third eye because it is in the same placement as the pineal gland which is the physical gland for the third eye. And strangely, you would think that the third eye is some kind of force up here that's literally just crazy, just not, not anything physical within your body, but it actually is something physical. It is that pineal gland, which is just a little, little type of gland in the center of your brain. You can really, you can look at it if you look at it in pictures, I'll probably put a picture up here, but it's, it's this small and it literally the importance it actually has to our physical bodies, to our well-being, to our spiritual well-being is beyond measure. Like, it's insane. And most people have it completely decalcified where they don't even know how to use it, how to take care of it. And when it literally is our connection to the spiritual realm, it's our connection, you could say God to source, whatever you want to call it. It's our connection to our intuitive means, our psychic powers, our higher awareness, our just being more than what we actually are on the physical plane. Because we are three-dimensional, not just three-dimensional beings. We are multi-dimensional beings that can, our awareness expands literally beyond this physical plane and beyond everything. And our third eye can help us do that. We have to know that the third eye is really, it's one of the most important glands in the, in the body, the pineal gland. It literally regulates how you think and feel every single day. The pineal gland itself regulates your circadian rhythms, which control your sleep and your wake cycles. You probably can already tell what those are. Your sleep cycles are basically how you sleep literally every single day. Your wake cycles is basically how you act and how you perform during the day, which is because the pineal gland actually secretes and regulates your hormones and regulates your stress levels and your physical performance. So, and which is basically all directly related to your mental health and what you do physically as well. So it's crazy how people don't even take care of it and they don't even know it exists when it literally does all the things that you do in everyday life and even in, while you fucking sleep, like it's crazy. So I'm gonna show you by the end of the video how to, how to start decalcifying it because a lot of people have theirs calcified which just basically means like deteriorated and very, it's supposed to be really big. Like if you look in ancient cultures like the Egyptians, theirs was fucking massive. Ours is just like a little acorn right now. Because a lot of people have conditioned theirs to be, you know, completely worn down from what it actually was before and completely deteriorated and not taken care of because they were not aware that they had throughout their lifetime, like been feeding it stuff that was just like literally just shooting at it from everyday life. And one of the craziest part about it, you know how a lot of people say that they do third eye meditations and all that stuff. 
And when they begin opening their third eye, they begin seeing a lot of crazy things everywhere. They could, or just they could see auras, you know, they, they're tapping into those higher realms of dimensions or consciousness or awareness and expanding what they actually see out here. So that's why we tap into it. And I feel like that's somehow related to the DMT that's actually found within the pineal gland because the pineal gland also, you know, when you die, your brain supposedly releases DMT. That's why you have those like mystical experiences or whatever. And I th and it's crazy that it's that is also found within the pineal gland. And there's certain exercises that you can do which make you release that DMT, which are like little crystals of like within the pineal gland, like different colors. And when you do certain breath exercises like pranayama and certain breath techniques while you meditate and taking in the prana, which is pranic life force energy that is people call it the breath as well because you intake it with conscious breathing. You know, with meditation, you intake that prana, which is everywhere in the universe. It's within you. You you regulate prana within your system. It's it's like that's why the chakra systems are energy centers that help. And the nadis, you have three nadis, which are basically energy channels that regulate that prana energy throughout your chakras and help it, you know, all your chakras. When they're aligned, it pierces them, that pranic energy, and it goes all the way up to your crown chakra. And you have this crazy experience that's a whole nother video i'm gonna talk about but yeah it's very important for all that stuff and we have to know that like i said it literally it has dmt in there so when you begin awakening it you might feel or see mystical things or when you were in that third eye meditation you might experience something you know, some of those mystical experiences because dmt is also like that's literally a drug that people take to have those crazy psychedelic experiences where they see spirits, they feel like they're in a whole literally whole nother dimensions where they also see sacred geometry, like nature patterns in nature, which I will also talk about because I feel like if people see that when they take psychedelics and when they're on, you know, this higher level, levels of awareness, that literally let, letting them see beyond this reality, I feel like they're seeing into like the structure of reality itself which is sacred geometrical patterns. When you know that like the importance of sacred geometry to all life is, it's crazy. I'm gonna talk about that too, but this is a third eye video, so let's keep talking about that. All right, also, another very interesting thing is that the Egyptians actually called it uh, the third eye itself. They called it our connection to source. You could call source whatever you want, spirit, God, source, whatever. Our connection to source is literally right here. They also called it the seat of the soul. They, a lot of people think that that's where the soul actually lies. I also think it lies like everywhere within us in our whole body, but that could be the primary seat of the soul, you know? And they also called it the gateway to higher realms. Imagine that. That's why I've been saying that when you're connecting to those higher le levels of dimensions and awareness and consciousness and seeing beyond this level of reality is because the pineal gland, that is why it's called the gateway to higher realms because you literally transcend whatever you're experiencing right now by tapping into that and being more aware and seeing beyond what you perceive in everyday life, you know? So it's very important to begin taking care of it and that's what I'm gonna talk about soon. All right, so also, oh yeah, people, I feel like when people begin awakening it, I feel like it's the start of their spiritual journey. It's not really like the third eye chakra is really what starts your spiritual journey. It's not all the way down here with the root chakra. It starts when you begin become more aware of your unconscious patterns, become more aware of the world around you. You become just more aware of everything, you know, the secrets that the government has been holding, aliens, you begin tapping into a, more of a spiritual, more spirit, you know, the higher spiritual realms of reality itself, like seeing the connection of all life. That's also a very important aspect to the pineal gland because if it is our connection to source and everything is source or spirit, that means that it allows us to connect to everything in a sort of oneness type of way, in a sense of realizing the unity in all life. When it's really awakened and you begin to see that, it is because your third eye or pineal gland has become very open, you could say. And also, one of the very interesting things is that, you know how I said it basically unifies us as a universal consciousness, a universal state of awareness in one mind. 
the geese, the geese and a lot of animals and herds, basically like deer and all the animals that move together as one, like geese, you know, Nidhiri, I'm gonna show some pictures right here. What, you know how they move and they fly in a sort of like, in a sort of arrow looking thing? Together as one, as they were all connected by one universal mind. Like, t like communicating telepathically between each other and also herds of animal, like perfectly in sync, moving together as one mind, as one group because they themselves actually do have a plenty of land and of course it is not as deteriorated as ours because they don't eat things like junk food like fluoride so they're they're able to use that to communicate with each other through psychic means i know that sounds very esoteric you could say but it is true that's what they do and it's very interesting that it allows us to connect ourselves with that universal mind that is everyone on here in the universe. We are all connected by one universal consciousness. You are me, fundamentally you are me, and fundamentally I am you. By one universal mind, one universal state of awareness that is beyond our bodies, beyond everything that we think of really. It's really unmeasurable because it is everything. It is a thing that allows us to experience everything, allows us to be aware that we are experiencing, right? Right now, the thing that's making you aware that you're seeing me, hearing me talk, is not just things like your ears, your brain, your eyes. It is a sort of, it's very strange because a lot of scientists don't know much about consciousness itself, but consciousness is, it's basically awareness, you know, just presence. And that is everywhere. That is in a tree. You can really be still and see that presence within a tree. You can see that presence within inanimate objects. You know, like everything is just presence. Everything is stillness. Everything is just being. It's just there. And that to me is consciousness. And it is everywhere. And it is everything. And you are that too. Your consciousness that you think is individualized by your nervous system, by your body, is really not. It is, it expands to all things and it is all things and it is that same consciousness that is found within you is the same consciousness and awareness that is found within me, within a bird, within a butterfly, within everything that is aware of what they experience. That's why I think everyone, every little thing has in a sense like we are like re, me right now. I think I'm the center of the universe because I'm experiencing everything outside of me, but the universe really is within me. I know that's probably confusing, but like. For example, like butterflies or bunnies or your dog even, they themselves from their point of awareness and consciousness, they see themselves as the main character in their own little movie, experiencing the world as one. But beyond that, they are everything because we're all experiencing the world together as one. All right, let's get to how to decalcify it, how to open the third eye itself, which is very, very, very important. And first you have to know, before actually starting to work on it and awaken the third eye or the pineal gland, you have to decalcify and, you know, help cleanse it from all the things you've pushed onto it, like all these fluoride, the bad foods you eat every single day, all the shit that you literally are basically burning it or just completely like putting pouring chemical liquid on that bitch and fucking making it small and making it literally this is what it I'm, I'm gonna show you some pictures this is what a calcified pineal gland looks like does that look healthy to you right here does this look healthy to you no do you want that to be in your body no so what do you have to do take care of it and take care of what you do on a regular basis like be aware of what you eat what you intake when you what you drink what water you drink that's why i drink filtered water without fluoride because one of the main things that actually calcifies your pineal gland or deteriorates it and basically wears it out is fluoride which is found in crazily all tap water or at least 80 percent of all tap water in all u.s cities basically almost everyone in the u.s they filter their tap water with fluoride isn't that a little weird in most other countries it's literally not a thing but in the u.s they like oh what should we add to this water to water down our people and not make them aware of what they really are and their superpowers that everyone has within them and that they're spiritual beings living in a human experience and they literally are everything in the universe and they're connected to everything in the universe. What do they do? Just pour some chemical in your water. What are you going to do? Just drink it because you're not aware of it. But now you are. So 
don't drink tap water. Also, your toothpaste. The main thing that you use every single fucking day, your toothpaste also has fluoride. Which I, in a sense, a lot of people think it doesn't affect you. I don't know, but I'd rather just be safe about it and not not take fluoride with toothpaste. So obviously, you can find fluoride-free toothpaste. I have some myself. I'll put up some brands right here, but you can just go to your Walgreens, whatever your store, and you can find it out on, normally on the bottom shelves too, which is weird. Literally, in the place where you won't see them, that's where they put it. But at least there's some out there, so go buy that if you're still using fluoride toothpaste. And what else? Also, you can filter your water with certain fluoride filters. There's a brand that I use. I'll probably put a link of it down down there that I use that literally filters 98% of fluoride in your tap water or whatever water source. So I, I would also suggest not to buy plastic water bottles because they have BPA and you literally drink, you're drinking also chemicals from that. And you're also, why drink water in a plastic bottle that's literally killing your environment? Just use water, just get a water filter that you can reuse every day that filters the fluoride and you'll be fine. Also, one of the main things, there's a lot of things that you can drink or even eat that decalcify the pineal gland just like that. This is one of them, it's called apple cider vinegar. You can literally just take a, just pour up, you know, take a little shot of it in the morning, pour. I know it tastes like complete asshole, but it is what it is. You can just take shots of it whenever you feel like you wanna calcify, decalcify your pineal gland. Also, there's a lot of other things. Harry Taki powder is also very good. Um, beets, surprisingly, beets also help. Uh, other things, I'm probably put a list of it right here. But also, diet, like I said, is very important. So buy some of that. You can make sure it's also organic and raw, unfiltered. With all your food, make sure it's organic. Really, you don't want to put any fucking fertilizers and chemicals in your body. That's not good in any sort of way. Alright, so let's get to, uh, yep, Harry Taki powder. Black seed oil, I've heard, also helps. I'm not sure. You can probably look that up. But let's see. Uh, now let's get to actually how to activate the pineal gland. One of the main things I do almost every day or what I try to do every day is sun gazing. The things I actually, I'm going to make, I'm going to do the list right here, but it's sun gazing, meditation. Meditation is very key to awakening your third eye and just tapping into everything that is beyond you but really is you and you start awakening to your true aspect of really what you truly are so meditation sun gazing crystals even uh what else let's see i got a list um breath work breath work is also very important but i feel like that goes with meditation as well like i said you can regulate your prana energy through your body with conscious breathing Meditation is very key. What I normally do is very just conscious breathing. Like look up pranayama or uh, the Wim Hof method or the breath of fire. They're really just very good methods. You can look up anywhere on YouTube. Just conscious breathing, like very deep breathing. Because the more you take in the breath, like more uh, prana energy, life force energy through the breath, that's how it regulates that. So very conscious breathing. I like to, as you breathe, I like to take in like, I would say like maybe 10 second breath in. That's pretty long, but whatever you can do. And like a little pause. And as you're doing that, visualize the energy actually coming up 
through your spine all the way up to your pineal gland and actually decalcifying it. You can imagine that. You can also imagine just energy and energy here. Just focus anywhere because wherever your focus goes, energy flows. So as you meditate, if you begin focusing on either right here or in the back in your pineal gland, you can begin awakening just by the simple act of meditating with intention, visualization, and focus. That's very important. You can visualize really visualizing it with your third that's what it, like visualization really is it's seeing in your mind's eyes that's why when people like you right here if i tell you a whole story right now like i tell you think right now of a tree of a little guy sitting next to a tree eating an apple and then a dragon just comes by you're imagining right now that i think at least you are in your mind's eye like getting the whole story in the pictures that's what your third eye is really doing that's how it's doing it because your third eye is your inner eye. It allows you to see things in your mind. It's crazy. Also, it has like, you know, the retina tissues that you find in your eyes also found in your pineal gland. It literally shows you that is also your inner eye. Sun gazing, like I said, is one of the fastest way you can, ways you can begin to decalcify. You can just look at the sun any point from sunset to sunrise, 30 minutes before uh, 30 minutes after sunrise or an hour after sunrise to 30 minutes before or an hour before sunset. You can just look at it for like 20 seconds or 10 seconds even and then close your eyes and look at it again with your eyes closed. And it's like those repeating cycles of looking at it with your eyes open, closing your eyes and looking at it with your eyes closed. And you just do that a couple of times as many times as you're comfortable with if your eyes begin like Obviously, there's less UV rays at that time, so it's good. It's also like that little sun gazing, the Egyptians used to do that. I'll put a picture right here. The Egyptians do that because they knew the secrets of the third eye and the pineal gland. They knew that sun gazing literally helped awaken it. All right, my fault. It kind of cut off. But yeah, sun gazing, just do that. Sun gazing meditation. Also, you can use any type of purple crystal is also good. As you meditate, you can hold that crystal in your hand. With visualization, also is very important. And these are some good ones. Amethyst, Labradorite, and Fluorite are some good crystals. Also, music. You can do third eye music, or which is at a certain frequency of the third eye. You can listen to that as you meditate, or even just throughout the day. And that's basically it, guys. Uh, you know, stay, stay aware. I'm thankful that you guys, if you stay to the end. But you really just, you have to realize you're much more powerful than you may think of yourself to be. You literally are everything. The most fundamental aspect of you is everything in existence. It is the consciousness that is found everywhere in the universe. And you have to realize that you can tap into that source consciousness, that source energy within you and within everywhere that is everything by awakening your pineal gland, by tapping into those higher levels of awareness and consciousness. So, Alright guys, that's basically it. Uh, much love for staying till the end and yeah, peace out.